answers to the questions that you need. That you need. Get the information so that you can plant a seed. To grow your wealth and build a legacy. Need help trying to build? Just ask Ellie. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Ask Ellie. Of course, as you know, this is my live business talk show. And if you are watching today, then you're in for a treat because we are actually filming Ask Ellie in front of a live audience. So everybody say, hey. 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 <laughs> So this is my live business talk show where I want to speak to real entrepreneurs and answer their real questions that they have about business. No fluff, no games, no gatekeeping, just real value to help real people make more money so they can build wealth. So we are going to bring up a couple different guests today on the show from the audience. And I'm very excited to answer their question and also for you guys to be a part of it too. So as always... Their information will be down below in the description, and if you want to be on the next show or if you want me to come and film Ask Ellie in a city near you, then text Ask Ellie to 310-564-0065, and I'll text you when I'm in your area, all right? So today we are in Los Angeles, California, so our studio audience today, oh, look at me, I said studio. See, I'm already claiming it! Ah! We are already claiming a live studio audience. Come on up, sis. All right, let me pass you the mic. So introduce yourself and uh, let us know a little bit what, about what you do and then ask your question. Um, so I am Sarah Elizabeth, and I have been in real estate for eight years as a W-2 employee. And I am also a creative, so I've been trying to find balance between the two, and I'm just starting a few things. So, may I start with a compliment first, if I may. I just want to say, first of all, I'm back to back because I was at your trust class on Thursday. <laughs> and then I want to say thank you because the, the Robin Hood nature of your delivery is just incredible. It's crazy how much is withheld from everyone and the fact that you do not gatekeep and you really just show so much love. We love you and thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, guys. So my question is, especially starting, it's kind of a high value, how or what's your best advice for balancing everything and being on top of everything that you need to be, especially in the beginning? That's a great question. Thank you. That's such a good question. And thank you for being so kind. Um, balance. You know, that's the thing. Like, balance, I really, I, I believe that there isn't a such thing as balance you really just end up committing to seasons, right? So you're going to commit to a season where you do deep work. You know that for this stint, even if it's seven days, I am doing the work now. And then the next seven days, I'm pulling my feet off the gas. You know, if we try to look for a balance in the same day, what ends up happening is we may actually get less done than we needed to get done. So instead of looking for a balance in that moment, commit to what are my seasons of work and what are my seasons of rest. And that way you actually ensure that you're doing so much more in your seasons of work and then you've really earned the season of rest, you know? And I feel like another thing that's really helped me, because I'm, I'm also a mother. Do you have any kids yet? Not yet, okay, girl. <laughs> Chill over there, yeah, yeah. Good, take your time, sis. take your time, I'm just saying. Love my kids, but definitely take your time because it changes things. But, you know, whether you have kids or not, how you kind of still treat yourself in the midst of building something, I find it's very helpful to remind myself why I'm doing it. And something I do and still do is, you know, I kind of write a list in my notebook of what matters to me, where I would like to see myself in 10 years, you know, who, who in my life, motivates me to want to be better. And so when you get to those moments where you're tired, when you get to those moments where you just feel like, is this worth it? Why am I continuing? Then you go back to that list and you read that list and you let that be your fuel, you know? And that helps us to achieve the balance because even when we're in our seasons of work, 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 if we go to that list and it reminds us, this is what I'm doing it for. So while it's still a challenge, now you have a reason behind your challenge. Does that help? Do you have a follow-up question? Okay. Thank you, Queen. That was a good first question. 
So that's a great idea. So if you know you have a question, what it would be great to do is maybe head over so you can see Gina right before you come up, and then we'll go from there. Hello. I've met you before, I believe. Hello. So introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, so yes, hello everyone. I am Success Money, and uh, yeah, we met through Chelsea in yeah. Vegas. Remember? Yes. So basically, with the children, um, I just introduced my daughter. You guys, I have a 20-year-old in the back. So I, when I invested in your course, and I'm like, these kids, I have a mother of five. So hearing you, mother of four, you know, the balance doesn't exist. But how do you really say yes to things and no to things, being that, you know, we want to spend time with our children and then we want to leave them things. How do you, like, decide what business you're going to do and balance with the children? Yeah. Um, that is such a good question because, you know, as mothers, we have some other moms in the house or dads in the house. Woo! Shout out to parents. We tired. Woo! <laughs> We sleepy, yes. Um, you know, I think that for me, because I have little ones, right? So my kids are eight, six, and then the twins are three, almost four. And, you know, it is hard, right? But for me, what I really look at when I'm deciding, you know, what am I going to pursue and what am I not, is I look at how, how can I involve my kids in this? And if it's something that I cannot bring them on the road, or not even on the road, but bring them along on the journey with me, then it may not fit. And that's really why I love having an online or digital business, because when I started creating digital products, I really did a lot of my work when they were sleeping, you know? And so it's really allowed me to create a business that fits around the life I want to have. And I think that when deciding what am I going to pursue? What is going to affect my kids? It's really key to look at, well, what kind of life do I want to have with them? What do I want to be able to leave behind to them? And then how do I choose or make my business fit around that? So much of the time we want to fit our life around our business or our life around our job. But the beautiful thing about going and creating your own way is that you get to design it how you want to design it. I like to call it life design. I feel like I'm in my life design season where I'm looking at, okay, I might want to go and live in West Africa next year, you know, right, with my husband, with the kids, so we can experience that. So how am I going to design my business to fit that life design, you know? And you look at, okay, so I'm going to pursue this. Maybe I'm going to take more of my business online. And if I want passive income, let me go ahead and set up a couple of vending machines in advance. Let me go and get one property in advance so that when I'm out there, I'm receiving $1,000 a month in rent. The vending machines are doing what they need to do. And I think another thing we think we should think about is with our children, we want to pass down wealth to them, right? We want to make sure that they start their life when, you know, with more than what we started with, right? In college, it was a hard time, but hopefully I can give them an advance. And so something that I often think about is, well, number one, having a, you know, things like a trust, right? Setting up those strategies, but then looking at what are assets that can actually stay in value over time. And much of those assets are gonna be things like real estate, even if that's not the business you go into, but just setting that aside as a property. Another great asset are investment accounts, right? Hiring your kids into your business is a huge thing that I do, especially with them being so young, so that the money I'm paying them, right, they don't necessarily know that this is happening, but that money is being invested for their future. So that's something I like to think about in terms of when I'm choosing what is going to be the best. Can this benefit them 20, 30 years from now? And can I also be able to still spend time with them and enjoy what we're doing now and show them, like, this is why mommy works so hard, you know, because we're building this. You have a follow up. Yeah. Thank you for that. So, after watching your course and actually there with Chelsea, I had started my Shopify store like a year ago. And really, because I know um, I have a 20 year old, a 17 year old, a 12 year old, 11, and a 4 year old. 
And so my four-year-old really was the inspiration for the store at first. It was like, if I gotta buy all these clothes, you know, she was growing out of stuff, I'm gonna design your stuff. So we have a black business incubator here in Baldwin Hills, and it's the old Forever 21, and I'm the only store in there that's a nonprofit, but I show people how to be in person and online with my Shopify store. So just from being around you guys, it has afforded me so much more time because I've been in real estate for 17 years, but I have to be present. And then trying to get your children to inherit and do your business, you know, my daughter has been on so many open houses with me growing up, but I couldn't force her to take her real estate license test. So it's like once we build these things, how can we like really instill in our children to maintain them, you know, don't sell all my property, you know, <laughs> and just go buy a bag, you know. <laughs> I think something that is key too is go ahead and form LLCs for your kids from now, you know? Even if it's not like, they're not really into the business, but for example, my son, he really loves to draw, he loves shoes, so he doesn't know, but I already have an LLC form for him that's just, you know, around artistry, around creativity. And so then there's already a business structure there for them, maybe as they grow into more of their personality, then you can present that to them as like, hey, you can go to college and get a job, and you can also go do this business. And so, you know, they may not have a passion connected to what we leave for them, but they'll build a passion for entrepreneurship and business, so then they'll have a respect for the assets that they've inherited, you know? Because I think that it's so important to pass down generational wealth, but it's also so important to pass down generational knowledge, yeah. you know? And we can leave, oh yes, let's get the claps on camera, yes. <laughs> you know, it's so important to pass down generational knowledge because we can leave all this money, you know, but if we don't really talk to them about, here's what you're supposed to do, and here's how you go make it grow, then we're back at square one. So, I love that. You are welcome, success. Everybody, give a hug, give her a hand of applause. Thank you, love. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> awesome, those are great, great, great questions. Hey, thank you for coming up. I love your locks, those are beautiful. So introduce yourself, let us know what you do, and your question. Hello, my name is Chanel Hudson, and I recently, literally just started my own book publishing company. So I self-publish children's books. Yes. <laughs> yes, specific <laughs> Specifically, I focus on global black history. I feel like there are a lot of black historical figures from around the world, a lot of melanated people throughout history who have made significant contributions to society who we never hear about. And so that's really the genre of my books. So thank you. Um, so first of all, let me say thank you so much. I consider myself a graduate of YouTube University. And so I'm on YouTube all the time looking for business information and I heard a lot of things tonight that were just gems that I've never heard before. So thank you for that. Um, my question, and this is something I was grappling with today actually, trying to establish business credit. And um, I thought that I was just gonna go and apply for my business credit card and it was gonna be simple. And I opened up the page and it was this long list of all of these different credit cards. And I was so overwhelmed. I just shut out the page and I'm like, I don't have time to deal with this right now. This is too much, but I know that I need to do it. So I'm, I guess my question is what might be, what should I be looking for? Who should I, who should I run, who can I run to? <laughs> like, who, who can I consult? Should I call up Chase or like, what should I, what, what should be my first steps when establishing business credit? Such a good question. And I definitely commend you for getting started on the business credit process. So, you know, there's a couple great ways to start. Number one, there's a few accounts that I would want you to set up that are not like necessarily credit cards. So first, all of you all should get an account with nav.com, nav.com, okay? So uh, this is where you're gonna be able to sign up for their business booster plan. And it's, you know, $30, $40 a month, but every month that you pay that, it builds your score. 
Shout out to LA. <laughs> Um, another great account that you want to get is with eCredible, okay? So eCredible is also going to build your business credit. It's $9 a month, but what they do, their program is called Business Lift. And so any other bills that you pay, right, your phone bill, Wi-Fi bill, any other bills that you pay and you use it for your business, they're going to take that history and report it to your business credit. So if you have an office space or a, a boutique, whatever the case might be, any payments that you're making in your business but that currently aren't going to business credit, they're going to take those and report it. So that's another great, great option. A third account um, is with Credit Strong. So Credit Strong has, most people know about the personal side, but they also have a business side where you can essentially get a $2,500, $5,000, or $10,000 loan, okay? And the way that they make this work is when you make those payments, you're essentially paying the loan back to yourself, okay? And so you choose the payment amount that you want. No personal credit is necessary. It's strictly EIN. And you're literally approved same day because it's going off your business and you make the payments. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> so these are all things that you can go and set up literally tonight, tomorrow, right? to start building that score. And the great thing is by having these three accounts, you don't necessarily need to keep this forever, but a good six months to a year with you know, these accounts circulating is gonna really boost your score. Now, for the business credit cards, there's a few that I recommend. So, you would Chase, you bank with Chase? Okay, so I definitely recommend getting the Chase Inc. card, the simple one, but here's the thing, a lot of people apply online what you want to do instead is go into the branch or call a specific banking representative like from your local branch and do the application over the phone. And the reason why this makes a difference is because you have that human connection, number one. And then as well, if by chance it gets denied, in that moment you ask to speak with the reconsideration department. Okay? And so because you're on the phone because, or because you're in person, they'll call up the recon department is what they call it. And then you have the opportunity to essentially talk to them about why you need this, how they should still consider your business, even if it's new, whatever your personal credit looks like. And I'm telling you this because it worked for me. When I first got my first ever business credit card with Chase, I had like a 580 personal credit score. But because I applied with the person over the phone, then I was denied. They transferred me over to the reconsideration department, and I basically was able to say, listen, I just got a divorce. You know, here's my life situation. I know this business is going to work. I'm going to make my payment. And they gave me $5,000, right? So what, that is going to be a great way for you to get in the door. It's a great way, you know, good card to start with. And as well, the American Express Blue for Business card, do the same process. Don't apply online. Apply over the phone. Yes. <laughs> you are so welcome. Thank you, Chanel. Give her a round of applause, y'all. That is a good, good question. How many of you guys are working on your business credit? Right? Yes, yes. We should, we should all be working on our business credit because, you know, statistically, black-owned businesses and women-owned businesses, we receive you know, less than 4% of the funding as compared to our counterparts, right? Every other ethnic group. So if they get 200,000, we get 4,000 or 8,000, maybe 10,000. And it's just, the discrepancies are huge. Um, so we have to make sure we are positioning ourselves for capital all the time. Hello, gorgeous, come on up. All right, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Cristina Cardoso and I'm from Santa Barbara. As you can see, I'm Latina. Yes, I am. So I follow Ellie. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you because, because I follow your instructions very well. I was able to get, I just, I was able to get my first business credit card with American Express. And the best part is that I purchased the VIP dinner tickets with my business credit card. Yep. 
so I am learning so much, even though I've been in business for a long time. I started as a volunteer for girls. Um, I worked 17 years for the school district. And I saw the need in the Latino community um, that the girls were struggling a lot with, you know, substance abuse and also with uh, domestic violence. So I volunteer as a life coach for them. So I'm a life coach. I focus on self-confidence. I focus on aligning the mind, the body, and the spirit as one. And then the finances come along. So I just wanted to say thank you, thank you. And questions, I don't have any yet, but I'm joining you tonight. Yes. Thank you. Shout out to her with her business credit card. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. That is amazing. Literally, we just talked about that card, and then she walked up on stage with the card. Like, that is incredible. So, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Ask Ellie. Again, if you want to be on the next one, make sure that you text Ask Ellie to 310-564-0065, and I will let you know when I am pulling up to a city near you. As I always tell you, you are a future millionaire. Somebody say, I am a future millionaire. I am a future millionaire. You are going to create the life you have always wanted, and I cannot wait to see you on the next show. Thank you all so much for watching the show. It is my absolute pleasure to bring you this value and answer your questions live. I want to make sure that you understand that in no way am I giving you financial advice. I always recommend that you hire a licensed or legal professional for any of your financial, tax, accounting, or business needs, okay? Thank you so much for watching the show, and we can't wait to see you on the next episode of Ask Ellie. Bye-bye.